I did mention at the end of the previous lecture that uh, the next topic would be looking at how to extend countably additive functions from algebras of sets to sigma algebras. Um, but when I said that, apparently I had not opened the textbook for a little while, and I forgot that actually what we want to do next is further study the property of countable additivity. So what we'd like is uh, a criterion that makes it easier for us to prove that uh, additive functions are countably additive in the first place before we start thinking about extending countably additive functions from algebras to sigma algebras. How do we prove they're countably additive in the first place? Uh, often using the definition directly is super annoying. Uh, and so today we're focusing on a criterion that makes it easier to prove that functions are countably additive. So we start with this definition here. Um, definition 141 of a compact class. So if you have a, uh, a set, fancy k, of subsets of x, then we call that collection of subsets of x a compact class, if and only if it has this property, which is whenever you have a, uh, I'm calling it a sequence in fancy k, or an at most countable family of sets, uh, an at most countably infinite family of subsets of or, or of, of sets that are in fancy k, uh, which intersect emptily, whose, whose overall intersection is empty, then there's some n so that if you intersect up to n, then that's already empty. So in other words, a compact class is a collection of sets that has the property that if you have some at most countable sub-collection with empty intersection, then taking finitely many of them would be enough to get empty intersection. So notice this, this feature of being a compact class. This is a property of the collection of sets as a whole. It's kind of like algebra of sets or sigma algebra of sets. It's not a property of the individual elements of this. It's not a property of individual subsets of x, but it's a property of this thing as a whole. And we're using the word compact here, but notice that there's n we're not even saying x is a metric space. This is all just set theoretic, right? There's just some set theory property that K satisfies, and then we call it a compact class. So nothing to do with compact sets, at least uh, when you just look at the definition. But there is a reason for the word compact showing up there, which is one of the main examples, is that if, if X were a metric space, then compact sets in X would actually do this. So main example, let X be a metric space, and then let fancy K be the collection of all compact sets. Then, that, then k would be a compact class. So let's think about this. Uh, why, why is that true? So let kn, let that be a countable family of compact sets, compact subsets of a metric space x. And assume that the intersection of the kn's is empty, if you intersect all of them. then can we verify that there's a, some finite subcollection that intersects uh, to give the empty set? Well, uh, one thing that makes the situation easier to think about for compact sets specifically is that um, if you intersect two compact sets, you get a compact set. That's one of the early things you prove about compact sets. Intersection, they're closed under intersection. So here, K is closed under finite intersections. Notice that's not required of a compact class. That just works. That happens to be the case for this particular compact class of compact sets. It's closed under intersections. So then you can replace, let's define kn prime uh, to be like k1 through kn intersected. So you can replace the kn's by these kn primes. And it's harmless. This is still a collection of compact sets. And since the kn's intersect emptily. Uh, these guys intersect emptily also, but now we can say they down arrow to the empty set, right? Because they are also nested. When you define like this, they become nested. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if we want to show that intersecting some finite collection of these gives the empty set, um, it suffices to do that for the kn primes, to show that some uh, 
at least one of the kn primes is the empty set, or equivalently intersecting finitely many of the kn primes gives the empty set. So the question, is this a compact class, becomes equivalent here to the question, um, if I have a family of sets down arrowing to the empty set, and this family of sets is, is a family of sets in k, then must one of them be empty? Or is it possible to have them all be non-empty and have them down arrow to the empty set? All right, and do you remember this theorem, uh, 335, from, uh, from our 118a and b textbook by Abbott? So this is the nested compact set property, which was like a, a, general, a general version of the nested interval property. If, if you have a nested sequence of compact sets and they're all non-empty, then the intersection is non-empty. That's like the contrapositive of what we want, right? We, we want to say, if the intersection is empty, we have the intersection being empty. So according to this, uh, if they were all non-empty, the intersection would be non-empty. We have an empty intersection, so at least one of them must be empty. So it's thanks to this, the nested compact set property, that um, it must be that one of these kn primes is empty. And that's why compact sets in a metric space form a compact class. This, this idea. By the way, uh, if you're more familiar with baby Rudin, um, then on page 38 you see the same same idea here, that if you have a collection, and this is more general, this is about metric spaces rather than being about just R, like in, in Abbott, but it's the same, same proof. Um, if you have a collection of uh, compact sets, and actually Rudin doesn't require them to be uh, nested. So this actually directly is telling you that the collection of compact sets in a metric space forms a compact class. Um, so even not nested, just a collection with the intersection of every finite subcollection being non-empty, then the intersection of all of them is non-empty. The contrapositive of that statement is, is what is basically just saying the collection of compact sets is a compact class.